This is Safe Food, Safe Communities, Unit 1, Understanding Foodborne Illness. In this unit, we will be introducing foodborne illness, explaining what causes it, and learning about what to do in the case of a foodborne illness outbreak. Cooking for groups of people is much different than cooking for a single family. Making food in large quantities requires greater planning, supplies, and space. If food is being prepared for a soup kitchen or a similar organization, people at high risk for developing a foodborne illness are often served. So there is a greater need for coordinators, employees, and volunteers to know how to safely prepare food to prevent a foodborne illness. Foodborne illness is also called food poisoning. It is an infection caused by eating foods or beverages contaminated with harmful bacteria, viruses, parasites, or chemicals. The most common infections are from bacteria and viruses, so we will be focusing on these in this course. Not all bacteria and viruses are harmful. Actually, most bacteria are beneficial, and you can't live without them in your body. Good bacteria help break down food and kill harmful bacteria. Harmful bacteria and viruses are also called pathogens. Pathogens can cause food poisoning. We will be using the term pathogen a lot in this course, so make sure you remember it. Symptoms of foodborne illness include vomiting, diarrhea, and stomach pain. After eating contaminated food, symptoms can appear as soon as half an hour and as late as six weeks after consumption. These symptoms usually don't last for very long and don't require visiting a doctor. However, those with severe food poisoning may be hospitalized. If symptoms are severe, such as a fever of higher than 101 degrees Fahrenheit or loss of consciousness, you should consult a doctor. Anyone can become sick with food poisoning. You probably have become ill with food poisoning at some point in your life or know someone who has been affected by it. Certain people are at higher risk of developing a foodborne illness. These people include children, the elderly, pregnant women, and those with another medical condition that weakens their immune system. There are many ways bacteria, viruses, parasites, and chemicals can get into our food. Foods like eggs, milk, cheese, and meat are not sterile, meaning that they already have bacteria present when you buy them. Because bacteria are already present in a lot of foods, improper cooking, serving, or storage can leave harmful bacteria on the food or allow bacteria to multiply quickly on the food and cause it to spoil. Bacteria are also transferred to food. Someone preparing food without wearing gloves or without properly washing their hands can transfer bacteria around the kitchen. Utensils and surfaces not cleaned after being used can also cause bacteria to enter food. This is why it is important to clean, separate, cook, and chill food to stop the spread of pathogens that can cause food poisoning. In this course, you will learn safe practices for every step of food preparation, from planning meals, to cooking them, and finally storing them when there are leftovers. Even if these safe practices are adopted, a foodborne illness outbreak can occur. If a foodborne illness is suspected, preserve any leftover food that may have been the cause. Clearly label it danger and freeze it. Monitor anyone who is ill and make sure to take them to the hospital if they are experiencing severe symptoms. Contact your local health department if many people were sick from the same predicted source. When cooking for groups through an organization, it is common for volunteers to assist with the planning, cooking, and serving of food. These volunteers probably have varying knowledge about foodborne illness prevention. It is important to train volunteers about basic food safety practices. Appoint someone in charge that is familiar with cooking and serving space, has a plan for what is being prepared, and knows food safety practices. This person can correct volunteers when they are not using safe food practices and answer any questions. It's also important to make sure volunteers or other food employees are not working while they are sick. Sick individuals should never be around food being served to others. This course will provide specific tips and practices needed to keep your community healthy.